everyone, it's April here and tonight I'm going to be doing a little watercolour video. I haven't done anything in watercolour for ages so it was super fun to get back into it. And one of my favourite things to do is mess around in my um, experimental watercolour sketchbook which is this one here. And tonight I'm going to be showing you four little exercises that I like to do when I either have a new material or I want to warm up or I want to experiment a bit or just play with colour. So I hope you enjoy them and maybe try them out yourself. And the watercolours I'm using tonight are actually going to be the Windsor & Newton uh, tube watercolours but you can also use pans for this. As you can see before I got my tubes I used this pan a lot. And this one here is from Windsor & Newton and I have another one from Derwent. So they're pretty cheap. And then I also have a whole bunch of different brushes. You can just get some cheap ones or just use one. You can use many. I've got a fat one here, a slightly thinner one. Uh, I like to use a square one to do swatches and um, a wee diddy one there if you feel like doing some detail work. But like I said, you can just use whatever you have on hand. And then you might also want to get some kitchen roll or a little uh, rag if you got one lying around. And then you need some watercolour paper or a sketchbook. This is the Caddy Papers sketchbook and it's really nice, it's like handmade paper, it's made in India, it's got these really cool rough edges and I'm trying to fill it up by the end of the year. So you want a couple of bottles of water. I'm also using some pencils, you don't have to do this, just like using pencils. And I've got some microns, a white gel pen, and a Posca pen, which I don't end up using, because it doesn't work. But yeah, just grab whatever you got, and uh, let's get on with the exercises. So to start with, I wanted to choose like a limited colour palette. So for doing like warm ups and things, it's always fun to kind of keep with a few different colours. And of course, if you're trying new colours out, you can do this with new colours that you have. If you have 12 of them, it might get a little bit crazy on the page, but I'm picking these four here. And I actually forget to use the orange one, so forget you saw that. And I've got a simple white plate that I just got from Tesco, I think, or Sainsbury's for like a pound. And I got this colour palette a while ago, I think I brought it a few months ago, and I absolutely love these colours together. So the first exercise that I like to do, probably very familiar to everyone, is swatches. I like to get a few different colours and swatch them out, but mix in as I go. So here you can see on the plate that I've got this blue colour, and then I'm just mixing in a little bit of red as I go and so each swatch becomes redder and redder. So if you're doing this with a lot of colours, you can kind of see how it would become very messy, which is why I like to just stick to three or four colours for this kind of exercise. And I really also like to, when I run out of our different colours that I've mixed, I like to kind of put two in one. So you can see there I have like the Payne's grey and at the bottom I have the red colour. So that's always fun. And this is just super relaxing. You can literally pop on a YouTube video or some music and just uh, go for it and have some fun. And while this is a super simple exercise, I think it's also really good for kind of learning about how your colors mix together, how to neutralize colors. And if you're a little bit neater than me, you can also use it as a precision exercise where you try and make the boxes as uh, clean as you can and the lines between them as nice as you can. But as you can see, I'm a bit messy. And then this is another kind of one that I like to do sometimes where you just do different angles and a couple more that I've done in the past just as some examples there. And then exercise number two, I'm not really sure what to call it, I'm going to call it uh, circle patterns. So this one is super simple, you can also use it for swatches or you can just use it for warm ups. And all I do is just grab my colours and I draw a few messy circles. So you can use a lot of water if you want to get a nice pale one. You can mix the colours together. You can use kind of like a more dry brush effect if you like the texture. You can do whatever shapes you want. You can do squares, circles, triangles. I like doing the little circle ones. And then when they're dry, I uh, grab my pens and do some little patterns. So for today I'm going to be using the Micron pens. And I think this is a really good exercise if you're in a bit of a funk, you don't really know what you want to draw. Maybe you can just kind of do this and let your mind think in the background. There's no pressure to this, it doesn't matter what you do as long as you're just moving your hand on the paper and having a bit of fun. And I can't say that I came up with this idea at all. I 
I'm going to link some of my favourite watercolour, experimental kind of watercolour people in the description. But I think I first saw this from a lady on Instagram called Willa Watercolours, and I'll leave her below. She's one of my favourite people to follow on Instagram for these kind of things and experimental watercolours. She's absolutely amazing and she does kind of like circles like this, but a lot more intricate, a lot, lot, lot of more different colours. But if you're using that just as a warm up, I think this is a perfect thing to do. So sometimes I definitely run out of ideas for patterns and I just repeat myself. My favourite thing to do are these little like dashes. And sometimes it's really hard to actually think of a pattern so this might also get your brain working a little bit. If you're into making patterns, I'd love to make more patterns but as I said my brain just seems to be a little bit stuck on ideas. And you can also take it from the circles to these little rectangles here. So you have to come up with a few more ideas for patterns, which is the only bad thing about this idea, but it is really awesome to see them on the page like that when you finish. So for exercise number three, you wanna grab a big brush, something that can hold a lot of water. If you don't have a big brush, I get a medium brush. Just kind of like the biggest brush you can find. I actually like using this uh, oval shaped one. I think it has a proper name, but I can't think of it right now. So you wanna make your paints have a lot of water. If you're using pans, you can still do this. You just kind of need to fill up your pan with a lot of water as you go. And then we're starting with circles. So I'm trying to figure out how to use a brush there. Yeah, okay, I got it. And the whole idea of this is to kind of see how colours can mix and blend into each other. So basically the idea is you take either one colour or you can mix the colours together in a circle and then you create another circle very close to it and you just touch like so and the colours blend into each other. And again, this is not one of my original ideas. Are there original ideas out there? I saw this again from probably Will of Watercolours or another artist that I really love called Laura Horn. I can't remember who, but I'll link them both below. And while it's not an original idea, it's one of my favourite things to do to kind of uh, relax when I'm doing watercolouring when I'm warming up, just because it's super fun to see all the different colours meld into each other like that. And I just finish it off with a little bit of gel pen, doing some of these weird lines, kind of like stones, I guess, I'm not really sure. Just super simple, but very satisfying. And then here's another example of one that I've done before with a lot more colors. So you can kind of see how using a lot of colors makes the page a little bit busy. And the last one is like level five warm up. Um, something that I'm still learning, it's like abstract watercolor. And as you can see here, I've kind of attempted it. People make it look so easy, like it looks effortless, but I think it's super hard. You need to know all about composition, color, where to put things, mark making. I don't think you can get it wrong, but there's definitely a way of getting it right, if you know what I mean. So I'm very new to this. I started it a few months ago and I actually really love to do it. It's kind of like really different than what I would normally do and I have no idea what I'm doing. Basically, my whole plan is just to pop the color down on the paper, make different marks as you can see, and try to keep things balanced. So on the left page there, you can see I've tried to keep a nice balance between the blue and the red. And then on this page, I started with a lot of water and I created more, rather than color blocking, more of kind of like a, a melding into each other. But it does get a little bit messy when I keep adding paint to it. So I think the main trick of trying to get this abstract watercolor to look good is having a lot of form which as you can see on this page that I'm doing right now doesn't have a lot of form and when I came to add in pencil and pen in later I had a real trouble kind of trying to figure out where I wanted to put marks because basically it was just a big splodge of paint. So I'm using a gel pen, um, some microns and then some pencils here. I have three pencils that match the paint colour. I've got that crazy lemon highlighter to kind of have a little bit of pop, I guess. And as usual, I'm not really sure what I'm doing, but I think the whole point of this is not being sure of what you're doing, just kind of going with your instinct, putting marks where you wanna put them, where you feel it's right, you know, and not going overboard, like knowing when to stop. So I'm quite happy with this one, like those weird stripes, the rounded stripes on the left there, I'm not really into, but everything else I like.
And then when I moved on to this one, I had a lot of trouble because as you can see, there's not really many places that has like a lot of form. So I kind of tried to add form with the colored pencil. So it is taking it away from watercolor warm-ups. It's kind of more like mixed media warm-ups, but it's also something really fun to do if you just want to experiment, try out new materials, or just kind of free your mind from learning and being perfect, you know, if you're into that kind of stuff. So those were my four little exercises for warming up or trying new materials or experimenting. So I hope you enjoyed watching that and you will maybe give it a go yourself. If you know of these exercises or anything else similar, let me know. And I will link some of my favorite artists below. So check those guys out and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye.